Hello, today is Friday, August 4th, 2023. I am Jason Shapiro with CrowdedMarketReport.com. Today I am going to do something that I am almost sure I'm going to regret, but wouldn't be the first time, so let's just go ahead and do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the bearish side of the stock market. And as full disclosure, I, for the first time this year, got short the stock market last Thursday, and we can get into exactly why I did that. I got short the Dow. This is the commitments of trader positioning for the Dow. And you can see while it looks like it's just like neutral here on a net basis, what my stuff does is it indexes this data. So if you look at this whole period, this is the shortest that commercials have been in over a, a year and a half. So my index will then show that that's sort of max short commercials, which means max long for the speculators. And that's when I look to get short. So I then wait for a news failure. And I took last Thursday as that news failure. Some people, I think, disagreed with me on that. It's always a read. I thought that there was very good data that was sort of Goldilocksy data that showed growth with lack of inflation come out. And the market went up on that and then came down and, and closed down in the day. Uh, you can see that here. It was this reversal day right here. The Dow actually made like touched new highs for the year and then finished down. And my stop on that would be closing through that high, which it came very close to doing, but didn't, um, and now has sort of moved back down. But, and whether this trade will work or not, you know, just like any of my trades, uh, I like to believe it, it has about a 38% chance of working, but if it works, it will work a lot bigger than, than the risk that it took. So anyway, I am talking my book here, but you know, in the grand tradition of Wall Street, let's, uh, let's do some book talking, right? So let's start with the, um, the big picture. And, and I haven't gotten into this since I went bearish at the end of uh, 2021 because I haven't been shorting the stock market sort of since mid-2021. But, I mean, mid-2022. But, you know, let's get back into it. The, the big picture to me, and, and this is the long shot, obviously, and it really has nothing to do with trading right now, but let's just make the super bearish case, which is that... Uh, this whole society at this point is nothing but a Ponzi scheme financially, right? You've had a incredible amount of debt issued by the government to prop things up, really since 08. And what makes it a Ponzi scheme is that the people buying that debt is the government. They're printing money and buying the debt that they're issuing. That's nothing but a Ponzi scheme, okay? And Ponzi schemes have a way of ending. And when they do end, they end very quickly and they end very ugly. Does that mean this is going to happen? <laughs> no. Japan's been doing this for a very long time and their Ponzi scheme has it ended. Although the Nikkei is now at what? 32,000? Um, it was at 39,000 in 1989. So we're 34 years down the road <laughs> and the Nikkei has done nothing but, but lose money. And investing in Japanese government bonds during that time period has gotten you nowhere either because interest rates have been zero and even negative at some points. So while the entire society didn't collapse upon itself because of the Ponzi scheme, certainly investing in those assets didn't do you very well. And that's sort of a low probability event, clearly, because obviously... If there's anyone that can keep a Ponzi scheme going, it's a government that can print its own money, right? Which the U.S. can clearly do. But I still think that the laws of physics will tell you there's a limit to everything. And one day there will be a limit to the amount of money that the U.S. government can print that the world will accept, right? So anyway, that's sort of the big picture, super bearish, scary thing, right? But let's get more into reality of the here and now. And I would make sort of a few arguments. And my first argument clearly is, is the CO2 thing, which got me short. And that's the only argument that really I trade off of. So the combination of CO2 and, and news failure. And if you didn't think that the news failure last Thursday is any valid, you could certainly argue that the news failure today was valid. The, the, the employment report and everything came out pretty bullish. The market was ripping. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just collapsed and, and, and closed on lows. The Dow lost over 500 points uh, from its high in about two hours, which I know it's a different percentage basis, but 508 points was the Dow, entire Dow crash of 1987. So we had an 87 crash in, in about two hours today, um, which again is silly because percentage-wise is totally different. But you can make the argument that today was a news failure if, if you'd like to. So that's first for me. Second for me is like, I don't do technicals really in, in the classic way but one thing that i do like technically 
is I like to see in a bull market, and this is on almost any time frame, including intraday, right? The NASDAQ being the leader, followed by the S&P, followed by the Dow, because the NASDAQ is the most volatile of the indices. indices. S&P is second, Dow is third, so the most volatile should lead. What we had here was the opposite in this last run up, right? So the Dow went and tested its high and came in like very close of getting to a new high this past week, whereas the S&P did a little worse job of that, right? Came a little bit further away from getting to that high. And the NASDAQ did an even worse job of that. Didn't really come anywhere near close as those other ones. So the NASDAQ starting to lag the move, an up move, is to me a bearish thing. Again, across many time frames, but this is the this time frame. So on a technical basis, the way I look at technicals, that could be, could be a point, right? The other points that you can get bearish about, and clearly a lot of these people have been talking about all year. So I'm not going to get into the whole recession coming and blah, 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 because we know that story a hundred times over, right? But what I will say is this, we did see quite a bit of capitulation in, in the last few weeks, according to some of the prime brokers that, that see hedge fund flows, right? And I know some brokers and some derivative brokers who have told me that their hedge fund clients have really backed off of their shorts because they're just sick of losing money on them, quite frankly. So we have that, right? We had this week, what I would argue was the single most consensus thing that I heard all week was this idea that the stock market is going to go and make new highs this year because it's somewhat overbought here. And because of seasonality reasons, it's probably going to have a pullback here. And then after that pullback, it will then go and make new highs. Well, if that's what people are really thinking, if you think the market's going to pull back and then make new highs, then you are going to buy that pullback, right? And we don't know if they're really going to do that. We will find out because we'll see it in the commitments of traders data, what they did. But what I'm saying is that if in fact we get a decent pullback here, and if in fact people end up buying that pullback because they've been bearish all year and they're like, oh, finally, now I can buy in. 10% off highs or 8% or whatever it is off of highs, now I can buy it and they load up on longs there, then I think we have the potential for some real trouble, right? We saw this, the last time we saw this was pre-COVID or post-COVID when COVID first hit, the market went down for a few weeks, people bought the crap out of it. Like I didn't get a signal to be short at the high there, but two weeks into COVID, before anybody knew COVID was going to be what it turned out to be, at first they all just thought it was like bird flu or whatever. So they bought the hell out of the first dip, which gave me a chance to get short it there. And then and then the market, you know, seriously, you know, collapsed for, for a month or so. So if we can see something, and as an aside, we also had that on the way up here. Like I didn't get long at the lows in October of this year, which is typically what my stuff does, right? When it works is I, I kind of catch the market turn, but I I didn't have the the positioning set up in October when the market low low hit, but by January people had sold into the rally so much that I was getting long in January. So this might be the new normal for for the positioning in, in the stock market. Maybe people have adjusted how they trade rather than chasing highs and and. and panicking at lows, they're kind of waiting for a bounce to do it. So maybe in this one, they're waiting for a pullback to get long. Again, don't know if that's what they will do. It's a lot easier to say you're going to buy the dip than to actually buy the dip when the time comes. But we will be monitoring to make it to see if in fact that happens. And if in fact that happens, I think we could be in some serious trouble. So that's really simply my bearish argument. All right. I have hesitancy about this because I do think that the bears that are, have been dug in all year continue to be bearish. And I've been wondering what was going to get them to stop being bearish. Clearly the market going up wasn't doing it, right? And the more the market goes up, the more bearish they get because then the more valuations are, are ridiculous, right? So that doesn't seem to be doing it. So maybe it will be this sort of a dip and they'll feel that, okay, now we can get out of this and we can buy the dip. And then maybe we have a real move down. That's kind of what I'm thinking in terms of possibilities here. All right. So anyway, that's the bearish idea. Please uh, take it somewhat with a grain of salt because I am talking in my book. But that's kind of the idea I'm looking at. And I hope that you enjoy it. And i um, always happy to hear questions and comments. And um, I hope you all have a profitable week. And we hope to see you on CrowdedMarketReport.com. All right. Thank you.